Hi guys, this is Frenchy. Quick video to announce that DaVinci is out of the beta for 18.5 and I think it's the great opportunity for us to discover my favorite tool in 18.5. Let's not wait any longer, let's jump right in. Okay guys, here we are in our timeline and I'm very excited to present you the tools that I really love in 18.5. So I have three tools that are very my best of the best uh, in 18.5. So the first one is actually changing color management per timeline. Before in the old version of DaVinci Resolve, you could only change color management per project level. So that means that like uh, your color management would apply only uh, to your project and you can't uh, differentiate timelines uh, with color management. Before I was going to my uh, project settings over here and just like um, doing my settings here. And for example, if I had multiple outputs that was like uh, going to different devices, I would change always my output color space over here. But then like uh, it can become uh, quite messy because um, it's hard to keep track of um, your outputs and which color management you are currently. Uh, so because like when I uh, close, for example, my project settings, I can't see that, for example, my output would be break 709. The timeline becomes very handy for this kind of problem. I can, for example, have a timeline that I call DaVinci White Gamut to uh, break 709 for my TV display output. And let's say like for this project, I have a projection output, which is a DCI-P3 uh, color space. Uh, so then I can just uh, uh, right click and go to duplicate my timeline. And I'm gonna rename uh, and remove the Rec 709 to uh, DCI-P3, okay? So uh, I'm gonna double click in my timeline over here and I'm gonna right click and go to uh, timeline, timeline settings. So over here, you can go to uh, the new uh, menu that is color. You can also uncheck the use project setting and uh, you're gonna have a color management uh, that you can tailor that is not following at all the project uh, color management. In my case, I want to output a uh, DCI-P3. So then like, I'm just gonna go to uh, my output color space and uh, watch for a DCI. DCI P3, yeah, P3 DCI. And I click okay. So my color change because my gamut change. And uh, also then like, I have a visual representation of my uh, two timeline. So for example, like I can be like, okay, so this is literally uh, my DCI P3 and this is literally my Rec 709. I can be a bit more aware of where I am in my uh, outputs and a bit more organized. So this is uh, the first tool, which is great. Also this tool, um, you can find it in a media pool. So this is also the new feature in 18.5. Uh, you can uh, access actually your media pool from the color page, which is great. Uh, so um, we can actually close uh, our media pool. And now we're gonna uh, see the second feature that I love. Uh, the second feature is actually uh, the uh, composite mode in OneNote. The composite mode in OneNote is actually pretty new uh, for uh, older versions in DaVinci Resolve because before, if you wanted to do a composite uh, mode in the, the color page, you needed a layer mixer. Now, you can only have one uh, corrector node. For example, I wanna do, I wanna put my lot. So let's put a lot that I created, whoop. Let's put a lot that I created that uh, I call just lot uh, called uh, DaVinci White Gamut. Only made for DaVinci White Gamut. Um, if you want, I'm just gonna put it for free uh, inside the description. Uh, this is my gift for you guys. <laughs> and you can do the same uh, with me like to uh, just test uh, the composite mode. So I have my node over here with my lot and I find, for example, my lot 
uh, very um, very saturated and I only want the contrast actually from this lot so what I can do now is right click on the node and go to uh, composite mode and then I can change my composite mode and have for example if I go to uh, luminosity it's gonna only uh, keep my contrast and remove my color from my lot and uh, we have the contrast but not the color from the lot it's making like very interesting results and something that like I could only achieve with layer mixer before so this is a huge win and now uh, let's say so let's say I keep this slot and this is the cold lot that you can find in the description I want then to show you my last feature that uh, I'm really really uh, grateful to have because it saved my ass for multiple times and uh, the 18.5 made this tool way better than before so thank you for this because you're gonna save my ass a lot of times this year I'm sure <laughs> so, so um, we uh, had improvement on a magic mask so our magic mask is actually just um, having a roto tool inside resolve so I can show you you go to uh, this icon uh, you click it and you go to the magic mask menu when you get the color picker on plus that means that you want to select an object to uh, separate it from uh, the rest so I'm just going to select my guy over here and to see what I'm selecting I'm just uh, going to click this uh, thing over here so this square uh, so then like it's going to show me uh, what's my key so as you may observe, actually Magic Mask already did a really great job uh, of uh, delimiting my character. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, rendering my overall track. So I'm just uh, going to render. So my guy has been selected all the way and I can tell that uh, Magic Mask did a really good job. What I really like actually is um, that now Magic Mask when you render frame uh, is putting you a time, a duration than uh, for example the number of frames uh, that was left that I had in the old uh, version of DaVinci Resolve. The render cache is also a bit more uh, faster than uh, before, a uh, bit more optimized. And um, we have like uh, all our refined tools that uh, are amazing. So that's all guys. I hope that like you uh, are really excited as me uh, that the 18.5 is out now. And yeah, I see you next time.